In this lesson, we are going to be looking at creating input output tables. And right here on the first slide, I have two examples of input output tables. Um, let's remember real quick, uh, we've already seen these tables, but our input would be our x, okay, which is also known as our independent variable. And then the output would be the y. And that is known as the dependent variable. You need to be able to put all these together. The x is the input, y is the output, and understand them as independent or dependent. Again, um, over here we have the x is the input, the y is the output. And what we've already learned is the x is going to be the independent variable and the y is going to be the dependent. Now I know I'm repeating myself but I need you to understand those concepts. The y is the output therefore it is dependent upon the the input. So y is going to be determined by the x. For example let's plug in some numbers here. Um, let's say we have an input of 1 and we have an output of 3. And then we input a 2 and we have an output of 6. Or let's do another one. Let's say, let's jump to 5. And let's say we have an output of 15. You're probably already starting to see a relationship between the input and the output and it is a multiplicative relationship and it actually is an equation where the y or the output is equal to 3 times the x or the input y equals 3x this is actually the equation that produces this table here. Uh, and again, it is a multiplicative relationship. We need to get comfortable with this terminology as well. It's a multiplicative relationship. Now let's take a look uh, at another example here on this other input output table. Let's say we input a 1 and we get an output of 8. We input a 2 and we get an output of 9. Or again we'll jump to 5 and we get an output of 12. There's a relationship going on here as well but this one is an additive relationship. The equation is y equals, and then we have the x, but then we have to add 7. So y equals x plus 7. And again, let's remember this is an additive relationship. So we're looking at the relationship again between the independent and dependent variables. We have two variables um, and one of them is called the input and one is the output. Okay, let's look at some examples here or some, some more examples. This says create an input output table for the following equation. Okay, I'm just going to give you an equation and this equation says y equals 4x. Okay, so this input table, input output table, may look a little bit different than the one on the previous slide, but it's really the same. I've just added a part for you. Um, we still have the x and the y. But inside here, we're going to put uh, the equation, or we're going to put this part of the equation where it says 4x. 
x. What that means is whatever value you put in here for x, you're going to multiply 4 times that value and you're going to get the output. Okay? For example, let me, let me show you what this looks like. So let's plug in, again, let's plug in a 1. For this specific equation, we're multiplying 4 times the x value that we have inputted, a 1. And what is the output? It would be a 4. Let's plug in a 2. So again, we're going to multiply 4 times 2. And what is the output? 4 times 2 is 8. And let's plug in a 3. So we have 4 times the 3. And 4 times 3 is 12. Alright, so what we have created here with this input-output table are the ordered pairs, the X and Y ordered pairs. 1, 4, 2, 8, 3, 12 with our X and our Y. Okay, And again, normally you might see these in parentheses. These are all called ordered pairs. Or there will be the coordinates when we graph this um, this equation. And remember when we do graph it, let's remember that the x-axis represents the input and the y-axis now represents the output. Okay, so input, output. And of course this is our independent variable and this one is our dependent variable okay all right let's take a look at another example um, again create an input output table for the following equation and I'm just going to give an equation here let's say y equals x plus 5 Okay, this is not a multiplicative relationship. This is the additive relationship. So we have the x and the y, or the input and the output. And then again, we're using this part to determine what is the output. What is the y? So this is what we'll put in here. We'll put our x plus 5. So let's uh, just choose some x values. I'm going to change it up a little bit on you. I'm going to use negative 1 for the first one. Negative 1, 0, and 1. It doesn't really matter what we use for x as long as we plug it in properly. So again, we're going to use the x that we've chosen, or that we've inputted, and we're going to put, add 5 to it. So if we put in a negative 1 plus 5, my output is 4. If I plug in a 0 and add 5 to it, 0 plus 5 is 5. And finally, let's choose a 1 plus 5, and our answer is 6. Or we could just jump up to uh, 5, and we would have 5 plus 5, and our answer would be 10. So again, this is the additive relationship, and we have created the another list of ordered pairs, negative 1, 4. Wow, that's a large negative sign. Negative 1, 4, 0, 5, 1, 6, and 5, 10.
Okay, uh, let's look at a real world situation here and let's create the input output table for it. It says Jordan it says Jordan started his own lawn service company last summer. He charges his customers $25 per yard. So let's remember we have an independent variable and we have a dependent variable. And this one specifically, um, if he charges his customers $25 a yard, we could look at it as how much money he makes is based on the number of yards. So the money he makes is dependent upon the number of lawns that he mows, the number of lawns, okay? But let's enter, uh, let's create our input output table. We have our input and our output. And we understand if it's $25 per yard, you need to understand that as a multiplicative relationship. And it's going to be $25 times x. So the equation would have been y equals 25x. And let's say he does two yards and then let's say he does four yards and then eight yards and let's see what this would be so again we're multiplying 25 times our x value and we've chosen two here and that would be fifty dollars again let's say he is mowed four lawns well, then it would be $100. And then finally, let's do an example where he mows eight lawns. And it would be a total of $200. So again, these are ordered pairs. Uh, and they could be graphed as well on an x and y axis so we would have the x axis and the y axis okay let's go ahead and just label those we won't graph it but let's make sure we understand um, how to label it so the independent variable again is the the lawns the number of lawns And the number of lawns will determine, excuse me, will determine the money or how much money he makes the money. So again, that's just a look at creating input output tables and kind of understanding them um, using the independent and dependent variables that we've already worked on.